expectations for LA this year for you? I One think, of the top another, teams coming out I of the think West? another step forward. They have a very strong chance if they stay healthy to win that Pacific Division. Emily, I like this team. I do. I liked them last year. You look at the Kings, and I see a team that has the potential to drive it a little further. I see the Kings as one of those teams on the rise. I think they take a big step forward. I view them as a top three cup favorite. Great expectation means you've done something good. If we believe into the cause, into what the goal is, which the goal is to get at the end and get in the playoffs and be ready and get, get going as a team, uh, I really believe this team is in the right direction. Just to get started, we'll take a look at kind of what our summer plan was and how we come up with it. So uh, typically when the season ends, we, we have a, a review, not uh, unlike all your departments. Um, it involves our hockey operations, sitting with the coaching staff, going over every player, uh, you know, the performance, our expectations, how they measured against it, but also the team in general. Then we come up with ideas or a plan for the summer. It's a busy time. It's a fun time. Uh, it's a lot of conversations. Uh, you're on the phone basically all day, every day, whether it's with agents you're negotiating with or with other teams trying to figure out what the market is for, for different players, who's going to be available in the summer, who might not be, what's going to happen at the draft. The way we looked at it is we sat down with everyone and listened to the coaching staff and then scouts and everybody. and. You know, we, we've taken a couple steps and we're always looking to get better. We also understood we had to create roster spots for some young players. Now, these young players have either spent time in the American League, uh, some games with the NHL, but we have a real good understanding that they could fit into the NHL right away. When you get to the middle of May and into June, the NHL defines what the salary cap increase will be. And, and so we know a real good number there. So we had a real good understanding. We don't have a lot of space. We were actually over the cap. We had to make some moves, but the coaching staff was adamant that Gavrikov fit what we were looking for on left D. The Flyers with a big move this afternoon. The Flyers have traded the defenseman to Columbus and a multi-team deal also involving Los Angeles. Well, and how about the LA Kings, right? We saw them do business with the Columbus Blue Jackets earlier this year in the Gavrikov deal. They now sign him to an extension. They obviously liked what they saw. The Kings moved out a lot of money in that deal and they use that money to retain a player that King fans have been very familiar with, and that's Vladislav Gavrikov. Everyone here on our management team, uh, we've been calling around to other teams, seeing what their appetite is to take different contracts of ours. So Philadelphia was one of those teams that, you know, Blakey had reached out to already, planted the seed, and then as this other deal came about with Provorov and, uh, and Columbus, there was, you know, just a really great way to fix us in there and have a win-win-win for three different teams. I thought it was a really creative deal. After giving up a, you know, a first round pick, you know, having a few years and it'll give chance to uh, some young kids to come in and, you know, take that spot. Or hopefully if things go good and he really likes it here, we're able to resign him for a longer term in the future. Meanwhile, we're going into the draft and, uh, you know, a lot of the teams are doing the same thing we are but that, these are when the calls are made and you know kind of out of the blue we get a call from Winnipeg that uh, Dubois isn't going to re-sign there. Gentlemen the league hates news taken away from the Stanley Cup final but here we are <laughs> a three-team deal on Tuesday an extension on Wednesday and now some very significant if not somewhat expected news out of Winnipeg Pierre. Our understanding is that Pat Brisson has informed the Winnipeg Jets that his client isn't inclined to sign an extension this summer, not even a one-year bridge. Talked about it, there were rumblings for a couple of days, but the LA Kings finally land Pierre-Luc Dubois. Whoa, this is a seismic shift. What do you think? It's a big move, and we knew that the LA Kings and the Montreal Canadiens were kind of the two front runners here for Pierre-Luc Dubois. I mean, the LA Kings are getting a big centerman who those guys don't come around very often. You know this, right? for the lead. Scores! If you take the top 32 centers in the league, you can see over the last five years, 
just eight of them have been moved. That means just one or two of these special opportunities arise each year to grab a center. That's in the top 32 in the league. Here's youngster Cole Perfetti. Great pass. Kicked and rebound scored. Here, Luke Dubois. And the Jets strike first. For us, to get a six foot four center that, that, that could come in and be dominant and and help us and especially in our division now when we're looking at the good teams you gotta be one, two, three down the middle and you, you gotta be really strong. So we really feel for the next few years it makes us very dangerous as a team. Blakey went out, negotiated, executed on the deal, and now we're left with you know, one of the best center groups in the NHL. We have Kopitar, we have Dubois, Deneau, Lazat, all four very capable, very strong players in the league. And we think this will help us build that sustainable Stanley Cup contention team for years to come. These championship teams, these teams that are good year after year, I mean, that's what we're aiming for. We, we want to have sustainable success here with the Kings, not just, you know, a one or two year window. So we know to do that, you always need a wave of talent pushing up from underneath. and. So the draft is the main way to do that. Nashville, Tennessee, Kings fans. 51 weeks out of the year, they call this place Honky Tonk. This week, it's Hockey Tonk. The LA Kings don't have a first round draft pick in this year's draft. Never heard of Connor, Connor's Menard? Connor's Menard. Connor's Menard. Doesn't ring a bell. Is he a hockey player? You know, maybe in previous years and going back four or five years, we had high picks, right? You know, sometimes, you know, that top 10 pick, it's a little different player than where we are now. Strategy does change in that regard. It's just what, it's just what you want. Yeah, well, I mean, this is, these three, these three clearly ahead. Like that's, that's a home run for us. We need two outliers to go. Yeah. But that will be a home run for us. And often people think about the draft as who's at the top, you know, who are the star players and that kind of defines the draft. But if you do your draft studies, you look through past drafts, you'll see every year there's diamonds out there. You don't have to have a first round pick to find a really good player. From Lieberich, Jacob Dvorak. From Prince George, Cohen Zimmer. You know, you really got to do your homework on uh, what type of person uh, you might be getting. Good to have you, buddy. Is it a competitive player? A little bit of background about the, the person and things like that. And that is still important. That type of thing, no matter where you're, where you're drafting, where you're going to get the player, those things are, are still real important. Yeah, the meetings were really well with uh, LA. I, I've talked to them a lot throughout the year. And, uh, one of the top places I wanted to go, to be honest with you. And uh, I'm, just, I'm really excited now and, and ready to get going. The scene now shifts to development camp, which could be the first time to see all five of these young men in Los Angeles. None of us got that experience speaking like at the draft. Well, yeah, no, we were on true. we were on we were TV. All on TV. Yeah. It was kind of like sitting on know. our couch. Uh, it it kind of made it fun. <clears throat> like when mine, I got to have a lot of people there, a lot of people, family and friends. Like you see, like going up on stage and like being around other buddies that yeah. are drafted. That's pretty cool. It's a completely different experience. It is exactly. Like it's not like only. Really, didn't you guys rent out like a bar too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine was actually, mine was good. Mine was good. I'd... With the eighth pick in the 2021 NHL draft, the LA Kings are proud to select from the Barry Colts of the OHL, Brant Clark. <laughs> <laughs> That's our fourth D-man in eight selections. Look at Brant. I enjoyed it and like still made the most of it, but it would have been cool just to be like walk up on stage. Yeah. Do the whole thing. We bring the players in here to LA, and it's not hard. We we just want to because some of the players we have never seen because we just drafted them, so we kind of get to know them, get to know their strengths. Like I said before, on the ice, what type of player they are, how comfortable they get around our staff. Yeah, I think the whole staff, top to bottom, player development, even like head staff. You know, it's it's all guys that used to play. They they all played the game for a really long time. They all have a lot of experience, wisdom to share down. It's not just somebody that just like fell into this position, they, they earned it and they played for a long time. So that, that's pretty cool. And you know, there's certain players that are not, like you said, are the best in their teams and it's, it's hard, it's a big jump. So we kind of recognize that as a development staff, we'll kind of see how he reacts to, wow, there's a lot of other good players out here. So then that'll help us maybe set a path for him or how to work with this certain player. 
What's up? Good morning, boys. Good morning, guys. We're a little quiet today, eh, boys? All right, let's go four circles, boys. Kind of work with Yanetti a little in a little bit in a sense that he will give us a little more information on the certain player. Can we push him hard? Does it have to be tough love? Does it have to be nice all the time? Do they take criticism well? Right here. Okay. Give him a hard, harder. Harder. Say Jared Stoll or Matt Green or Odie have like the D and Stoll and Mike have the forward. They'll go over their shifts individually and see what he says. See how they talk or think about themselves. Some players, they critique themselves too much. Some players don't do it enough because they think they play great every game. So it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act for sure. Do that after every practice or every second practice, right? It doesn't take it. It's just grab a, grab a teammate, fool around on the boards a little bit, right? Deal with spinners, deal with on your backhand. You know, it's hard. We all have these curves now with the nice toe curves. So taking it on your backhand is tough sometimes. So practice that. Everybody wants it fast, right? And um, it's not just the fans that want it to happen quick or, you know, the coaches. It's also the player. You know, the players, they, they want to see results quickly too. And for an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, even 20-year-old, it's so demanding. And it's so hard to become elite at a young age. Ah, I did it way too late. That's not even close. Way too late. Oh! You were not going to be denied there. When a good young player comes in the room, there's two things that happen. The veteran players look at him and, and they say, how is that guy going to help our team? I got him, I got him. Our veteran players that have played in this league a long time, they want kids to come in and help our club. Second part of that, when the players are in the locker room and they look around at that, that young player, you know, whose spot is he gonna take? Yeah. Those spots, if these young players are driven and they say, you know what, I'm gonna go grab that spot, that's awesome. That's what the development staff wanna see. Kind of makes it for the upstairs staff, the hockey operation staff, to make a tough decision sometimes. And that's what you want. You want someone coming in here and going to grab a spot. And yes, if you look at our roster, it's 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 pretty good, not a lot of open spots, but you go and show the hockey operations and management side, they'll make a spot for you if, you're, if you go and grab it. We win. It's eye open for a lot of them, for sure. To, to see the players that come in here, and then they might see Kopitar or, you know, Deneau skating, like they're here in the, at the facilities and they'll be like, wow, look at them working out. I thought I was working out hard. I'm not working out nearly as hard as these guys and they're NHL players. It's the hardest to stay in the league. Yes, it's, it's still hard to make it, but to stay in the league and hold your spot, it's a tough, tough sport and a tough league and teams are, it's all about winning, right? Pro sports is all about winning. LA Kings want to win. We happen to be a team that's playing the right way because we have Anze Kopitar, because we have Drew Doughty. So these young players are not just come in trying to get goals, they're trying to help us win. Talent, skill, and you know, will help you win games, but the character, heart will help you win the championship. Taking the next step, I remember Todd talking about like we, it was a marathon. To get through a marathon, it takes a lot of those intangibles. It takes heart, it takes commitment, it takes sweat and blood and tears. I don't know if the Kings, when they won their cups, were the most talented team, but they had those intangibles. They ran the marathon. Do some of these players want to run it again? And there's no shortcuts. You can't go from one to 14 to 22 and almost be done. You have to run every mile. We're definitely, you know, near the end of the marathon, going uphill still, you know, and you want, you want to keep running. Hello. How are you guys? Like here? Like there? Just like that? 
I like the fact that LA has become a destination that we want. You know, making the playoffs the last couple of years, uh, not not having the su- success we want or need, but uh, a team that's kind of coming on the rise. So, um, you know, it's a, uh, we want to continue to push that forward. It started back when, as an organization, we try to do as much as we can for the players off the ice and everything they do. And, you know, you always hear that players will talk and they know. And I think if you keep doing it right every year over and over again, sometimes it pays off and some players will pick you. You didn't do the. You weren't with us last year on this. No. No, no, you're, you're, you're new. Yes. So. Anyways, welcome. Kind of so, new, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, were you going slap shot or just like a wrist full shot, shot? Full slap shot? Yeah. Just, I was going to say, I might... I trust myself, but I don't know if I trust myself. We're going to go right over the net right now. What? Hey, Marco. Gosh. It might help. Maybe that'll give me a six this year. Is that his stick? I just got to beat Dewey. If I can beat Dewey, that'll be a... He might retire. Everything it's way higher than I expected. You know, I, I love the team. It was such a great team. Everybody, um, it's like a huge family. I mean, yeah. You do a picture together. Are you, are you doing a buddy, a buddy picture here or what? Well, I, I gotta take my helmet off for doing a buddy picture. Everybody loves each other, laugh with each other. You know, we have a lot of fun. On the lap? No, thank you. Maybe next time. Our scouts do a really good job at breaking down guys and, and making sure they gotta come in and fit the way we play. Yeah! yeah. That way, Phil. You're a natural. At the time when Trevor left our team, we were in a completely different situation than we are now. We were um, trying to inject youth, find new players, and we were prepared to bite the bullet a little bit more and find Trevor more and find Phil Deneau. Um, now we're at the other end of the scale, and Trevor Lewis fits our organization much better now than he did that year. No, it was good. Got to work on my intense face. Rob and Luke have built something with our organization. A couple of things that are on our board as soon as you walk in the doors. You got to be competitive, you got to be coachable, and you have to be a good teammate. Last year was expected of us to make the playoffs and obviously go a little further than we did, but now it's, yeah, it's definitely time. We just have to take it day by day, you know, and enjoy each other and play as good as we can, but I'm very excited. We're climbing, you know, it's a mountain, we're climbing that mountain and uh, we're almost there. We still have 82 games to play, it's a long season, so we just got to be patient. You know, the message is clear, it's we're not going there for vacation, we're going there to prepare for the season, Um, so that's the, the most important thing. You know, it's going to be an exciting environment when we get there. It's new to everybody, and uh, the opportunity for the 27 players that we'll take to bond is also a positive. When you're a player, sometimes you don't realize it, but like when you retire, you're like, man, this is pretty cool. We got to go to Australia and play a couple of hockey games. It does come with some risks, the travel, the toll that it takes on the body. We're trying to look at it from the other perspective. I think there can be a lot of positives that come out of it. 